following is a presentation of TFNN. Time to talk about your health. Living a primal lifestyle. Yeah, we have Tom on t from Tampa on the phone. Hey, Tom. Good morning. It's bright and early now, huh? Hey, thanks. Good. Hi, Tom. How you guys doing, Nico? Doing great. Good. Hey, um, your newsletter's outstanding, man. I'm, I'm telling you, man, it is outstanding. And so is the front of my legs. I love that stuff. I'd never be without it. I mean, I've been on it now three, four months, man. I mean, it's just I can't get over how good I feel. Front of is, uh, no, people are raving about it. People who are trying it, they know because you can feel it. We'd not be without it. Call now. Toll free at one 877 927-6648 internationally at 727-445-1044 now your hosts nico dehan and paige clark good morning i'm nico dehan welcome to living a primal lifestyle where we explore a return to a more balanced natural and wild world that's right to recover our natural health and regain our rights and our freedoms i'm paige clark good morning. and it's a beautiful morning in downtown clearwater 70 degrees going up to about 80 and uh all week about uh, mid 70s so uh, it's gonna be a nice it's a little cloudy but uh pretty nice compared Spring's to Spring's probably see. around the corner i guess That's and right. uh, make sure you subscribe to our health signals newsletter it comes directly to your inbox twice a month ten dollars a month Got some great articles, the secrets behind one of the happiest countries in the world, and more great stuff. And, of course, the great stuff is the Primal Edge, uh, over 310 organic cell-ready liquid ingredients, all powered by fulvic and humic acid, which lets the good stuff in. And the bad stuff out. Yes, indeed. And uh, We're taking your phone calls. That's right. It's 877-927-6648. Uh, Today, I wanted to go over this talk, uh, and we had mentioned it briefly in one of the uh, earlier broadcasts, about... Uh, Amber O'Hearn, and she was at this uh, Ancestral Health Society Symposium. Yeah, which we, you was, and I keep threatening to go to that. We really should. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so many of these, and I love them all. And I, you know, nice thank thing goodness. is they, they give you access to the talks. Yeah, and uh, there's some great talks on here. Uh, Heather O'Hearn is really uh, uh, a down-to-earth gal. I recommend uh, if you just go to um, probably uh, Katonic, uh, org. There's a whole thing on there about her and this talk, and you'll find it on YouTube, too. So uh, Heather or Amber O'Hearn, and it's called Optimal Weaning from an elev uh, Evolutionary Perspective. So what she did with her oldest child, and she had breastfed all her children and uh, just decided to let them do it as long as they wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. And most of them, they said the first one was about two and a half years, the second one about two years, and the third one was about a year and a half. And that's yes. pretty much what Dr. Marshall used to teach us, was that the optimal time for breastfeeding was between 18 to 22 months. Yeah. yeah. What unusual thing Heather or Amber did was that she, with her third child, she decided to uh, introduce them to meat right away. So mm -hmm. in other words, from the breast milk straight to the bone. Let's put it that way. And Rest did, to bone. Yeah, and she said the first thing that he experienced was a uh, lamb bone. She just put it in his, her, his hand, and he started gnawing on it. Great for teething, of course. Like and a there was teething a, bone. There was a little bit of nutrition on there. But so why would somebody do this? That seems like a uh, modern-day uh, nightmare, especially when you're talking about all the propaganda that we get from the vegan and the uh, vegetarian community about the natural diet for human beings really is plants and not animals. And we, of course, are on the other side of the camp that probably it's the other way around. Yeah, and I like what she said. She said, uh, you know, that her talk was about optimal. And what does the word optimal actually exactly. mean? And optimal implies the best for something. That's right. And that's what we want to be the best of what we can be. And, uh, you know, weaning can be clarified because we often use it to mean the end of breastfeeding, but she also meant it to be a time of introduction of the first foods. And interesting, like you said, she did the meat. And, um, you she know. said she's concluded that weaning infants uh, onto animal-based diet best meets their nutritional needs. Specifically for the brain, she says. Yes, and exactly. That's really what we know. What we know is for those first year or so that breast milk is the ideal food. And remember what the composition of breast milk is in terms of uh, macronutrients? Well, it's really high in fat. Seven, over 70% yeah. fat. Yeah. And then we've got people giving their kids fat-free milk. <laughs> and trying to build sense. good brains. Especially when you go from the breast 
which is really high in fat and specifically designed for the human being into something that's manufactured doesn't really make a lot of sense. Because the human brain is unique, guys. Yeah, in many ways. One of the most striking things is the sheer size, especially when it's relationship to our bodies. In particular, when you take into account we are primates, it's really quite extraordinary. Ordinary. She says primates already have their brains that are about three times as large as more other animals, other mammals, at least in relative to their size, and then humans, again, about two and a half times the size. So we really do have a larger brain, and that larger brain really means that our evolution over these millions of years made this brain larger so we could do extraordinary things. But here's the second point she makes. Okay. The second way that our brains are unique is that our individual human brains do most of their growth after birth. Yeah. So it wasn't just what happened in vitro, it's what's happening afterwards, so yeah, it does the, matter. Yeah, there's two ways of thinking about it. So, uh, altricial and precocial, precocial, mm -hmm. precocial uh, is the terms that they use, and articular means really pretty much helpless, mm -hmm. and uh, precocial is really referred to animals that come out of an egg pretty much all ready to go like birds. And they have a long gestation, they're like little mini-me's. Yeah. Ready to go. Right. Yeah, and it's amazing because I had birds on my porch one year, a little doves, and we just kind of watched them, and, you know, the babies came, and two days later the babies were gone. They were already flying. We were astonished. Yeah, but in a way, they're still, some of them are still poorly developed. You know, they haven't oh, yeah. got all their feathers yet, and they kind of look almost like well, they came out not quite ready, but they develop each day. They Quickly. Mm, very, very quickly. quickly. It where, all happens. Where with the uh, human being, I guess we can think of it both ways, because when we come out of the womb, we're quite large compared to other animals, mm -hmm. uh, but we, don't, we can't do a lot of things. We can da, 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 look and we can wave and we can't walk, we can't talk, we can't do anything. But she says uh, it's better to look at human beings from another way. She's because they appear to be articulate, but they're actually better understood as pro, uh, how do you say, prococcial? I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, they appear, you know, human babies appear helpless. They don't have adult proportions at all and they can't walk or have the motor skills that you would expect them to have. In other words, they require that constant surveillance, but it's helpful to think of them as, as the precocial but born early. And um, Well, the reason they uh, we think that uh, because the brain does grow quite fast. Right, and so, it grows postnatally, as she says. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So we do have that uh, tendency to be all ready to go, but not quite. Mm -hmm. And we're growing pretty fast, but it does seem to take a couple of years to get on up to speed. Mm -hmm. So why did she think that eating meat instead of going conventional way that maybe her mother or society is teaching us to have our babies eat from formula and, or maybe uh, mash the food for them instead of feeding? You know, it seems like it's an opposite thing. You give uh, a kid a bone, what the heck are you doing? It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the first thing you think of most mothers is some very soft, easy yeah. to deal with food. Yeah, we, we're mashing everything up for them, but that's really mm -hmm. not the way to go, probably. Yeah, so tell us more. Okay, so uh, let's talk about... She wants, wants to draw the attention that the fetal-like brain growth doesn't just extend beyond birth, it also extends beyond the end of weaning. That's good to know. She says, this is a mistake. I meant to say that the rapid brain growth continues past the end of weaning, but it is fetal-like only at the beginning of weaning. So she kind of made a mistake in that thing. So when we come back, okay. we're going to take a break. Let's talk about some of these brain growth requirements and what kind of support do we need to give? To grow. I know one support you, you can give uh, is uh, picking up some primal energy. That's how you keep the, the brain you had. That's exactly right. <laughs> we'll be right back, folks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. 
Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Page of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Nico and Paige take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Good morning. We're talking about how do you grow a healthy brain with your children and also keep the brain that you grew when you get older. Yep. So there's three key things we want to think about. The first one is we need specific micronutrients. And that's the vitamins and minerals that we always talk about with the primal edge. We call it kind of a one-shot wonder. Yep. I mean, so here you go. Here's a researcher saying those micronutrients are crucial. They're just not available in the soil uh, that we grow our food today. So kind of using uh, a, a resource like that as an insurance plan is a great idea because adult brains can suffer if they don't get enough of these micronutrients. And if you're trying to grow a, a healthy child, uh, they may not get what they need. Second, the brains require an enormous amount of energy. Yeah, now. where do we get energy from? Two sources, carbohydrates or fat. Uh, and, of course, we're, be, we being fat adapted uh, has makes much more sense to go with the, the fat instead of the carbohydrates because there's much more en energy in a gram of fat than there is a gram of yeah. carbohydrates. More bang for your buck. And that's then that's right. the third one, of course. Uh, we need to grow a healthy brain. We need the structural components. We need the scaffolding. We need the stuff that builds a healthy brain. And guess what that is? It's made mostly of cholesterol and fat. Yeah, I think of protein when they when they talk about structural, but the protein is where the fat is. Mm -hmm. you know, half, yeah. Half well, of an animal the, is fat. The truth that the best source of cholesterol that we can really get is from animal sources. That's right. That's right. So the evolution requirements in parallel to that the evolution the evolution of the brain has similar requirements we've needed the, these micronutrients and the energy and the structural components we need them to be available over a period of years for our lifetime for all individuals and that needs to be compounded more or less continually for millions of years for us to be able to make uh, these growths that we saw in our brain these so that's kind of a scary thought you know, we had to have all these minerals available for us to grow. You know, you think of that picture of man evolving and mm -hmm. growing and the brain growing. Well, since we know we for years have had a decrease in these minerals and so forth in our souls, so, uh, soils, yep. so what's happening to our brains? Are we, we are de evolution? Declining. Yeah. Right. Definitely. And uh, of course, we've shown that many times just the fact that agriculture also diminished it because of all the problems with the uh, seeds. The agricultural foods that we that we call them. So uh, yeah. So she really says here. Let me say this before okay. you get into this. 
idea of eating meat, these co-adaptions that we've had to make to survive and to grow, um, you know, it really led us to a specific need, and that is a high-quality diet by which she's referring to high in animal foods, uh, shrinking intestines, the intestine not being a long, multi-chambered thing, and a reliance on ketogenic metabolism using fat for fuel, which uh, sh showed us that we had an increase in body fat, particularly in babies. That's something else. You know, babies are born with a nice layer of fat. Some other um, infants or you know, newborns do not have the, the layer of fat that the human has. Yeah, I was a really fat little baby. You so, were? Yeah. Uh, and I was I didn't weigh that much. I weighed I'd like around five and a half pounds. I, I did was, too. I was only five and a half pounds. But that was Dutch pounds, so it might have oh. been even been lower. But I was two months premature, just like oh. my sister was. Of course, during the war. But you had war, a lot of fat on there? A lot, yeah, I was. if you see the baby pictures, I'm I'm typical fat baby, so I was pretty healthy, apparently. Yeah, wonderful. So uh, the plants that are available to us at the time when we were expanding our brain was simply too fibrous, too low in protein, too seasonal, real mm -hmm. key point, mm -hmm. and too low in calories to provide the energy. You'd have to eat ten times the amount of food that you would normally eat uh, instead of eating an animal. That's how much plant food. And that's what the animals do who are eating plants. You can see them foraging all day long. And that's what the uh, food companies would like us to do, be foraging all day long because it, uh, and on their food, naturally. So. Well, that's really what it took for our brains to grow. We needed a fatty source of meat. So let's go some of those uh, minerals and uh, those, mi uh, those micronutrients. Micronutrient sources? Yeah, okay, we were so talking about minerals like iodine, iron, zinc, mm -hmm. the fatty acid, uh, DHA, uh, well, we know Vitamin for a, a fact that DHA is almost exclusively found in animal foods, sure. you know, seafood or grass-fed beef. And... Um, well, they, 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 there is it's a claim. Funny. There is a claim that nuts and s seeds have these things, but we know that they're not bioavailable like they no, are. No, we can't convert it like that. Exactly. The microalgae, in terms of the plant food on that low level, of the food chain actually has yeah. um, a form, and and you, we even use a DHA-based algae-based DHA because it's kind of low on the food chain. Yeah. But that's actually the DHA that is being eaten by the, the fish. The fish, right, right? Or these the krill. Vitamin D. It's really, truly. Um, she makes um, vitamin D is only available in animal sources. There is a form through certain mushrooms that we're able to convert, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of experiment going on that. Iron's available in plants, but it's three times more bioactive in animal sources. Liver is a great source. You know, did you know that vitamin D is only available in animal sources? Oh, no, that's true. what I just said. Yeah, it's true that you can get it from sunshine, but the only other way is through the animals that have photosynthesis that they've been eating. The grass. Think They've the gone plants. through the stage themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is an interesting part because when the sun goes to sleep, like we're talking about the grand solar minimum all the time, so if we have to hide in a cave and we have animal food, we're still getting that vitamin D. But Assuming if, the animals are still out there. Well, yeah, maybe <laughs> we better start storing them, right? Well, you know, you stop and think about assuming the animals are around. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so another co-adaptation that we made was the shrinking intestines uh, that you talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. So this is the, our body's way of handling this type of food rather than uh, these large chambers that animals who eat plant food have. That's and right. The main reason, of course, for this is that they are always throwing the food into a chamber to ferment and decompose so they could chew it a little bit again, throw it back in there. So uh, all this fibrous material is broken down by bacteria, the type of bacteria we have very little of. We mm -hmm. do have some of it, so that's why we can eat these salads and things. But our bodies were never made to uh, take these cereals and these agricultural foods. That's the main insult here. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you can eat as much plant food as you want as long as you don't start eating the seeds. Yeah, the seeds are going to cause the havoc. Yeah, yeah we gave up uh, a drastic amount of the size of our intestines. It says intestines are also really energy intensive. So that smaller size freed up energy for the brain. And uh, as a result of moving towards a smaller intestine, we were able to create more energy out of the food we need instead of being the energy that processed the foods. Yeah. So, so we no longer have much of that ability at all 
and that, so that has also increased our need to get our fat directly from an animal-based yeah, diet. And, and that's really the coal adaptation number three is that using fat for energy uh, instead of uh, using carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. So uh, the brain is much happier. That well, we'll talk about the structural components, you know, because we're going back to the brain requirements. Mm -hmm. Uh, the author wanted to emphasize the structural components. I mean, it's so important. It's just an absolute oxymoron that we've got people running around saying cholesterol is bad for us, and yet the the organs that that are probably the most crucial to our being, our brain and our heart, really are reliant on cholesterol as a source of structure and energy. In fact, our brains bodies. are mostly fat and cholesterol, but dry weight, by dry weight, our brain is 60% lipids, about 40% of that, which is cholesterol. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The fact that we use ketone bodies for brain energy and material, which we and other, some, other species also do in the gestation, explains why newborns are in mild ketosis all the time. So when we get back, I'm going to switch over to another article talking about how to be a smarter, better, and happier meat eater. I think that's a great idea. We'll, we'll be, be right, right back, back folks. The break. number here is 877-927-6648. Mm -hmm. to tell you about the personal training studio that Nico is the owner and president of, Performance Training. Since 1998, Nico has trained individuals and groups to improve their health both mentally and physically. As a certified personal trainer, Nico's main focus is on demonstrating exercises correctly to avoid injury and teaching his clients how to manage their past injuries while getting the most out of their personal training sessions. The Performance Training Studio is filled with unique training equipment that enhances balanced results at a faster rate while minimizing damage and discomfort. For more information, you can give Nico a call at 727-418-418. 8740 or email him at nico at tfnn.com let him know you heard him on tfnn and save up to 100 dollars on a special package just for tfnn listeners act today Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming. See high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Eddie Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. It's a special month at TFNN, and with market volatility back, we've decided to hold an open house in our Tiger's Den. For this month only, you can get a full 30 days of Tiger's Den membership without paying anything. The Tiger's Den is our interactive chat room where you can chat with other tigers and tigresses along with the TFNN hosts during each of their programs. For all of the details and to start your 30-day free trial to the Tiger's Den today, visit the front page of TFNN.com before this deal is gone. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And welcome back to the show. Uh, how to be a better, smarter, happier meat eater. That's the name of the game for me. Under natural conditions, cattle are almost perfectly beneficial part of the regenerative 
agricultural system. This is a, another way to think of it, that it's part of the agricultural system. I think maybe, about maybe not though the way we use it today as a domesticated oh, exactly. as a domesticated cattle sure. we, as we know um, you know the Native Americans really poo pooed the way we domesticated cattle and they yeah. they thought you're gonna eat that thing yeah they they, they didn't well just feel think that. about the fields that we have like out in Kansas and stuff when I went to, out to Denver we crossed over Kansas and it's just basically a flat place with these big fields of one or two types of agriculture that going on there what it used to be it used to be a vast grassland with uh, all kinds of animals mostly a lot of bison and deer right. but also the prairie dogs were there but they roamed and they ranged you know that's right and the prairie dogs were digging up the soil and there was always a great topsoil that these grasses and remember some of those grasses were as high as a man on a horse Wow. These mm -hmm. are the types of fields that were indigenous to America. A beautiful, beautiful country out there. And because we wiped out the animals, we wiped out a lot of the prairie dogs. Yeah. We wiped out the topsoil there. It was just blown away because we kept plowing it and doing monocrops. Much better to have it be natural and look at all those animals that would be roaming down there and how exciting it would be to, for me, my picture is riding bareback after. Uh, going after one of those uh, animals, you know, but uh, anyway, I well, digress. Well, the, the whole idea is, is that as we're getting into this article, they're talking a little bit about, um, you know, animal husbandry, I would say, and the one thing we do know is we kind of went off on a side post, mm -hmm. but the way we, the, the, the beef animals that are today are not the way it was no. even two, 200 years ago. No, in fact, we think about it completely different. We could really do think about the meat and our ancestors most likely paid more attention to the other things, the bones, the, uh, the, uh, the stomach linings, the, uh, uh, all the organs and the brain and the blood and the eyes, and those things were prized by our ancestors. So we think of it completely different. But let's take a look and see why we can really use the cow, which is a modern species that we've kind of developed in domestication, and still be healthy. Well, because fortunately there is a growing group of ranchers and uh, butchers, so to speak, have started turning the system of uh, meat production around. They're pasture raising cows on their natural food, grasses, and allowing the, the babies to be with their mothers and, and grow up on their own mother's milk, which is natural. And this gives the meat so crucial for us to grow healthy brains and bodies. Uh, not only a healthy flavor, but a, a healthy mineral complex, as right. we mentioned, and the required cholesterol and fats we needed. And they're using the whole animals. I mean, there's some great companies. I, I was at the um, Weston A. Price Conference, mm -hmm. and there's a couple companies that are making the lard for cooking. They're making lard-based skincare products. They're making lip glosses. They're making uh, all kinds of things with the, the hides, you know, for polishing and so forth. I, that That's something that we should be proud of. No doubt about it. making our return. And remember when a white man came here and we saw the Indians using lard and uh, things from animals on their skin, we thought, how barbaric. They're, they're using the animal for all these things, and this is not natural for us because we have other ways of doing things now. But it's really the, be the best way. So one thing you need to do when you think about eating food, of course, is that we do it a lot different. We paint a nice picture of the animals out in the pasture and using the whole animals, but there are other ways of doing it, and that's the grain-fed feedlot type of beef that we well, do not Well, we, we digressed, and so hopefully we're having a return. I think we are. To, you know, so, because just about anything is better than industrial-produced feedlot beef. The best alternative is the grass-fed, the pasture-raised, uh, ethically, humanely, and you know, and organically, and eating the foods they naturally eat, which are the grasses, and you know, it might the price for, but there's some steak tartare. The price for pasture raised beef does vary, but it's expensive, uh, relatively. But you know, so is illness. Well, illness is real yeah. expensive, guys. Paying up front is, uh, makes a lot more sense, but I've often said that as we went through this, the first couple of years, we kind of spent a lot more money, but today we find that our food bill is very close to what it was 10 years ago. 
uh, when we before we started this. So our food bill didn't really go up. All that happened was the quality of the food went up for us, mm -hmm. and that quality of food ended up much liberated because we don't get much hungry we uh, don't eat a lot uh, and when we eat a couple times a day that we do and maybe have a snack in between it's small portions it's mostly meat maybe a little greens now and then okay we've got a question in the chat room okay and again you know this is how so many people have misconceptions the the comment is raw egg equals salmonella not true factory farmed raw eggs if you can start to understand that factory farmed food is not really food, it's Frankenfunk, okay? <laughs> but if you get a raw egg, I mean, the healthiest thing you can do is eat a raw egg, maybe two or three every day in a smoothie, uh, something, a raw egg. It's really a perfect food. It's the perfect food. It, it's unoxidized cholesterol. I highly suggest it, but only if you get the real egg. Yeah, I mean, and that's what this article is talking about, yeah. getting back to the way they were grown. Think about the chicken, uh, you know, what the chicken is eating, and you'll see in the egg department they're forcing chickens to be vegetarian. Can I you mean, believe it says that on the box? Chickens raised on a vegetarian diet. Which means they're There's no them such corn. thing, guys. Now, now, now remember that As chickens, a vegetarian chicken. chickens do eat seeds. But they pretty much... They're omnivores, like us. Yeah. They, they'll they eat, and they'll peck, and they'll eat some seeds, but they're really looking for a bug. That's what they're looking they for. Wanna they want to eat bug, those, guys. Yeah. Those chickens want to eat bugs. So, so if that, you, you stop them from eating bugs, you're giving them a meal that is not as nutrition as they would naturally feed themselves. Okay, so I hope I cleared that up. So yep. those are the things. I mean, we've been, we've been brainwashed to think that the real food is dangerous. Yeah. And then somehow or another, the stuff they put in packages is supposed to be good for us, you know? Mm -hmm. It's crazy. It's a crazy thing. Uh, number three is open up your wallet. The price of pasture-raised uh, beef does vary, but it's expensive. Uh, beef finished in a feedlot is somewhat cheaper, but it's still going to be steep. Ground beef, which constitutes of about a third of a yield of every animal, should be 5 to $10 a pound. Less is suspect, and more is well high. So premium cuts like ribeye, filet mignon are likely to be around $30 a pound. More is common. I found them much, much cheaper than $30 a pound, for sure. Well, you know, here's the thing. <laughs> Too. You know, when you're talking about, maybe you want to scroll because it's showing some words, maybe a picture, but um, it says learn from your butcher. Well, there that's my go. question. Do these butchers that are in the regular grocery stores really, are they really butchers or are they just food processors? Well, some of the, them are quite good, but you're right. In but general I mean, the rural. art of the butcher, I was kind of like trying to look around. Mm -hmm. Where's there a, a, a meat shop? And if there is one, I go in there and I don't see anything grass fed. You know, they're like, oh, this is prime, or I'm like, prime USD is it? Grade yeah, or, yeah, or whatever. They have all kinds of words but, for it. But some of the things you can learn, if you are lucky enough to find that, but, but again, go to the Weston A. Price Foundation and look for the food context. U.S. Wellness Meats is a company. You can order special cuts. There's weird cuts, and there's things to know about the cow's age yeah. or the so breed of the cow. We'll give you a little more information. Maybe this is something that you haven't ever really learned, but we're here to share because yeah. we care. Oh, well, we do care for That's sure. That's right. We also like you to pick up the Primal Edge over 310 organic cell ready liquid ingredients to get your day started. This is $89 to your door every single day, folks. So please pick that up. We'll be right back. Stick with that. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. 
No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN. TFNN, live on your mobile device, 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. So today we've been talking about how we can grow a better brain and animal foods are at the top of the list. So Nico, here's some stuff how that you can learn from your butcher or your sourcing of your meat. You want it to be uh, more like how that animal would grow up in its natural environment, humanely raised, properly processed. But here's some stuff. What about weird cuts? Well, there's a lot of them. He mentions one here was deckel, which I've never heard of. It's the succulent part of the prime rib that always tastes so good. Oh, that's what it's called. Okay. Even when it's well done. The other was the bone uh, lamb neck, which is simply roasted. When it's simply roasted, it's incomparable. Mm -hmm. Another thing to watch for is the cow's age. This is probably something that we don't think about. But, uh, He's getting all this information from a butcher uh, called Fleischer's Craft Butchery. And um, I guess that's the kind of shop, as I was saying. You just mm -hmm. don't see these places everywhere. Right. And um, He says usually the cows are slaughtered at a more, more mature age, just around 24 months, because a grass-fed cow takes longer to get to the slaughter weight. Yeah, they're which, not as um, heavy. Which is more expensive, of course, and uh, mm -hmm. if you're not uh, putting those extra 20 or 30 pounds on the cow with grain, then that, that uh, cuts down your profit, too. So we can see why people do this, because money is king, profit is king. But uh, And I mentioned us, U.S. Wellness Meats, which yes. uh, we use a lot of their blog information. We talk to you, and, and Matt in the chat room says they're very reasonable. So yeah, really, yeah. you know, I've when you get it, you know, too. yeah, exactly, they yeah. are. And... Um, Many times when you have these partners to get these foods, uh, you can get all kinds of different, you know, many people are going into sharing a cow share, you know, yeah. and that can be a good way to do it as well. So, Another thing is uh, they have uh, the different breeds. Of course, here we don't have the same breeds as they do in uh, for milking for uh, like they do in Europe, do they have the type 2 cows? Right, the Europe? A1 and the A2. Well, mm -hmm. we're, we're talking about beef cows here, you know, for meat. You know, you're looking at the Ang Angus or the half, what was the other one uh, that they mentioned? The Angus or Hereford. Right. Hereford. Hereford. But, yeah. you know, with the dairy cows, the A1 and A2, we're looking for Jersey cows. Uh, Holstein, maybe more of an A1 cow, but um, we the A2 breed produces a milk that is more like goat milk that we're able to digest better yeah. and unfortunately somehow or another in the u.s when we domesticated the cows we chose the less desirable breed 
yeah. to proliferate. Now, some of the things that he mentions here is seek out the, these meat stands. More uh, and more butchers are opening in conjunction with restaurants. Have you seen this here? And down in St. Pete, they're doing this also. Oh, yes, exactly. You see restaurants, and since they're getting it's great farm sources, to table. Mm -hmm, yeah, they're, yep. they're getting the source, but they're also opening it up for you to buy to take home. Yeah, and I've, uh, we have a fish store down in uh, Reddington Shores that's like that. The fish store is right next to the restaurant. Yeah. And this makes it convenient, even though it's not owned by the same people, they're in conjunction with each other, they're using each other's services, and therefore it uh, is more bang for your buck. Or you may want to have it come to you, as we mentioned, U.S. Well Wellness Meat uh, ships to you, mm -hmm. and uh, they mention uh, Mariposa Ranch has been... Uh, shipping people food to directly to the home. Yeah. Uh, the butcher box, it's a subscription that's, model. Yeah, that's a new thing. It's, Have you done uh, that? I haven't done it. I've looked at it. The meats are a little expensive. I haven't used them before, so a little reductions there. And right now, I'm really getting good stuff from uh, Earth Fair. I, when I go there, uh, I get, I'm getting to know the couple of the butchers are there, and they do hold pieces of meat for me sometimes, uh, like bacon. Sometimes they they mm -hmm. they. They're really good because when they get in an animal at the Earth Fair, the whole animal comes in. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned yeah. earlier, third here's the third one, the crowd cow. Uh, purchases a cow, tells you about the farm and the animal, mm -hmm. and offers you a share if you think the meat's uh, from too far away, if you don't like something about its story, or if the cuts you weren't are not of it, you know, the cuts that you like uh, are not available, you simply try again on another day. If your needs aren't met, you buy on another day, crowd yeah. cows. So that's kind of like crowd sharing. Yeah. Someone else made a comment. They'd like us uh, to do a whole section on A1 and A2 cows. I would uh, love to share that information. Yeah, I literally so. order um, Jordan Rubin. He was the founder of the Raw Vitamin Code. He's an author, uh, pretty pretty well known guy. Healed himself of Crohn's disease from raw dairy, mm -hmm. and uh, he still has a farm. And I get. Um, a2 cow uh, milk products uh, delivered that are cultured. They're called uh, uh, Amasi, which mm -hmm. is kind of after the Maasai tribe. Right. And then another one, which is a cultured whey called Swerviv, and I get those delivered to my house. But in your local area, you can seek out farmers in the raw milk database that will provide milk that's of the A2 species. Uh, goat milk is naturally A2, and so is camel milk. And yep. I met the coolest little, at the Bulletproof Conference, a uh, guy who ships raw camel milk all across country, so cool. cool bees. We'll get on that for sure. Yeah, and of course, there are other ways of doing this, and there's special ways of preparing everything, but uh, another thing that uh, the author says here, buy a ton and freeze it. So uh, getting yourself a good freezer, then you can buy a half a cow, a quarter cow, maybe the whole cow, depending on the size and then you can freeze it if you use uh, some something like a, a shrink wrap type of thing around it stays for a long long time uh, six months is nothing sometimes even a year for these large cuts right. you can get away with and the other thing to do is go visit some of these farms uh, like white oak patchers I've talked about there's a lot of farms out now that are specializing in this you can find them on the web there's a great uh, resource uh, that you can go to uh, Weston A. Price just off the top of my head that's one of them but there are others and this is a way you can get more connected with the farmer directly and find out exactly what you're doing that gives you some knowledge that when you go back to your own area you can seek out some of the farmers and actually uh, you know see what they're doing and see that they're up to snuff with some great organizations like the White Pastures which is really a family farm this is a farm that's handed down over five generations in the same spot great video it's, about them by the yeah, way yeah really good video they send mm -hmm. me materials every now and then White Pastures and, uh, it's a great great place to go and, and you know one of the key things is that when you're working with a farm or a direct whole cow operation you know think about the the awful which is the organ one. meats. This is the beef hearts, the liver, the kidneys. Mm -hmm. Our ancestors viewed these as an important part of our um, heritage in terms of eating. And we just, in the regular grocery store, nobody... Nobody finds it. Nobody anymore. finds it. You have well, to, like, remember, ask for it. Remember, these are really prime cuts, and they spoil faster. That's why uh, the factory farms don't keep them. Probably the factory farms not a way to mm -hmm. get it anyway, because those are the cleansing areas, of, and they're being fed such crap that you don't want those cleansing organs. You want the cleansing organs from a cow that's out in the pasture all the time eating, and that's it. 
So, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that you can find out just by going to a butcher. And I have a customer, she's really young, and she says, you know, I'm really not into meat because, you know, it's just icky and stuff like that. And slowly but surely, now her mother came in the other day, and she says, boy, she loves, she's loving meat. I can't believe it. She's loving meat. So once you take and switch your mind off of all this propaganda that we constantly hear about and go into some of these sites and look at what they're talking about and talk you know, listen to some of these things like uh, Amber O'Hearn, who have brought up children on this and see the fantastic children growing up very healthy, not having a flu shot, not nothing. It's a great thing. It's a good thing. So, and I think we got to get back to who we are and what makes us healthy yeah. and, and uh, follow so that advice. We're going to switch it around a little bit and talk about the confined dining and the different kinds of farms that are out there. Yeah, the factory farms, the kind of stuff you don't want. Yeah. Stick with us. Achievers rise above the rest, and when they see an opportunity, they take action, massive action. Achievers capitalize on every resource in order to experience success at its absolute max. And on Wednesday, January 31st, from 5 to 6 p.m., I'll share with subscribers of Mastering Probability how to achieve even more success with the extraordinary tools that I use to call the markets. These tools predicted the Ebola 2015 stock market bottom, the December 2017 gold bottom, why subscribers added to their mining positions this month as well. Learn the pattern that projects the Dow's next upside target of 30,740. Folks, great moments were born from great opportunity. So don't miss this opportunity to take advantage of my 30-day money-back guarantee for mastering probability. All the details are on the homepage of TFN.com. Sign up today and reserve your spot for the ultimate subscriber event. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! No matter where you're listening to TFNN programming, you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern, and you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones, iPads, and Android devices. Located in the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage, you can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV. But if you don't have a connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit tfnn.mobi in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and call-in talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating Investors. And welcome back. Thanks for sticking around, folks. So uh, when we think of farm animals, we picture cattle munching on grass, on rolling pastures, chickens pecking on the ground outside of uh, this great area with a red barn and pigs gobbling up food at the trough or from the kitchen window. That's the way I look at it. Yeah, and oh, I like that. I like that picture. But over the last 50 years, uh, the way food animals are raised has changed drastically and it may surprise many people that most of the food animals in the United States are no longer enjoying that that uh, that farm life that's presented in that beautiful picture Nico painted uh, they're not even raised on farms at all it's a business folks it's agribusiness and instead they come from crowded 
animal factories called confined animal feeding operations. Yeah, and, and it's know, very sad. It's sad, and the other thing is, just like other factories, the main concern in those factories is cutting costs, the profit line. Not the welfare of the animals. That's and, right. and, and that's the crucial thing here. When we are sharing information about the necessity to be at our healthiest of these animal source nutrients, we do want you to know that to us, and, and Nico and I are very concerned about an, animal welfare mm -hmm. and the respect, and uh, and we care about the welfare of people too. And yeah, we, what we know is is that this is I think there's the a big connection between diet. all of us. So. Exactly. So let's look at what they're feeding the animals, and this is really the disgusting part. So please bear with us. But one of the things they do. I'm not at, even going to say it. You say it. At the top is the same species meat. In other words, they're grinding up some of the waste uh, from the animals that they're butchering and so then throwing it back. Yeah, throwing it back the into the feed. Uh, they also do that with diseased animals. They do use feathers, hair, skin, hooves, and blood. They use manure and other animal waste. They use other things, too. Plastics, like drugs, chemicals, and uh, a very unhealthy amount of grains. And as we understand, many of these animals, that uh, the, the cows and so forth, are not really designed to eat grains. That is not part of their natural diet. That's right. uh, it is grasses and so and forth. The other thing is too that uh, this is legal folks, you know, so the FDA has determined uh, against the welfare of the human beings Again, and the guys, animals. guys, don't ever think the FDA works for us. They are guardians of big business interests, right. whether it be exactly an animal right welfare, human welfare of what we eat, uh, whether it be for drug and pharmaceutical companies, they are watchdogs to, they are profit protectors yep. and business protectors. So, you know, this advent of mad cow disease, um, which is also known as bovine spongiform encephalitis, is um, really has been raised a lot of international concern and is most likely a result of this practice of recycling um, same species meat and, yeah. and these other byproducts. And since the discovery of mad cow disease in the U.S., the federal government has taken some actions to restrict the parts of cattle that can be fed back to them. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Uh, I wanted to mention, too, folks, we have a chat room here, and this chat room right now, they're going through a, a little phase of uh, you can get in there for free. That's so if right. you want to try it out for a couple of weeks, this is the way to do it. So go to the uh, main page on the website, and you'll find and it, it there. Yeah, the den is a lot of fun. We it's get a lot of It's called an open good. house, uh, mm -hmm. to the Tiger Den open house, so that's a good thing to do. Getting back to the same species meat, this is pretty disgusting stuff. I don't like to linger too much on it, but this is our last segment. Yeah, and I, I mean, but it goes beyond just that. It's the manure and the waste and yeah. the plastics so and so forth. So under current law, pigs, chickens, and turkeys uh, that have been fed rendered... Uh, cattle can be rendered and fed back to the cattle. So not only are the cattle eating cattle, they're also eating the pigs, the chickens, and the turkeys, and probably not the good ones because these are the ones that died in the process. It's or really, maybe it's the shavings of them. So and you can right. really understand why some people do, but folks, that's what we're trying to say. We have to use our discernment and source things properly, avoid factory farmed animal products altogether, okay? And uh, choosing grass fed and grass finished beef and dairy products, pasture raised pork, poultry and eggs, this is the, these are the keys. Yeah, and do your own research. I'm gonna throw this stuff, of course, into the, uh, the future newsletter so you can dig it out a little bit and find out if you're doing the right thing or not. I appreciate everybody sticking around. And, and we'll, we'll see you next, next show. show. Have a great day. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. 
Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. You're watching Tiger TV.